Uh, resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Battle River Crowfoot. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And it is, uh, I, I stand again proud to represent and stand with and for the people of Battle River Crowfoot. Uh, but it's unfortunate that after nine years of those Liberals leading this country, that we are once again uh, debating a scandal of unbelievable proportions. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, the circumstances that led us to the, the, the SDTC uh, 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 situation. And then I want to dive into why documents matter. What this, this, this uh, uh, violation of, of the privilege of members of this place is and why that is, should be so concerning to, to Canadians. So, Mr. Speaker, the uh, Sustainable De Development Technologies Canada, uh, the Auditor General did a report that found that, it, that, the, uh, uh, that the Liberals, that Prime Minister, those ministers had turned it into a slush fund for Liberal insiders. And a recording of a senior civil servant slammed the, quote, outright incompetence of that government that gave more than $390 million worth of contracts inappropriately. Mr. Speaker, to put that into context, $390 million is a astounding number when it comes to the uh, uh, amount of money, especially at a time, I would add, Mr. Speaker, when Canadians are hurting, we're seeing th uh, this year we will see more than two million Canadians forced to visit a food bank. And I know in my own constituency I speak to, uh, uh, of which many are not-for-profits hosted out of churches or, or, or community centres, local food banks, that because of the actions of this government, things like the carbon tax, uh, uh, the, the, the um, mismanagement of the economy that's led to uh, uh, increased inflation, among so many other things, uh, Canadians at record numbers are forced to visit food banks. And in some cases, as I see some of the numbers that have been provided to me by local food banks, often ran by volunteers. It is absolutely heartbreaking. And Mr. Speaker, I would just note uh, that, that in one case it was interesting because I heard from, from uh, 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 some of the folks that run one of these local food banks that it was stunning to them how it was not just folks that had fallen on hard times that were forced to visit the food bank, not just those who had lost their jobs forced to visit the food bank, but in some, in some cases people that you knew around the community that uh, were, were simply had no other options. Their credit cards had been maxed out. They didn't have anything left in order to feed their children at home. So they were, in, in those cases, Mr. Speaker, forced to visit a food bank. That is the legacy of these Liberals. Yet while Canadians are hurting, 25% of Canadians, according to reports, are, are, are facing poverty-like conditions. And Mr. Speaker, what is this government's response? $390 million worth of contracts inappropriately given out, many of which went to well-connected Liberal insiders. $390 million not going to help Canadians, not going to, to, to grow the economy. $390 million, more money than most people could ever imagine, going to well-connected Insiders. The Auditor General found that SDTC gave $58 million to 10 ineligible projects. They couldn't get this, Mr. Speaker. That government that talks big about the environment, yet they gave $58 million to projects supposedly to help the environment. That was the reason the, this fund was created. But they could not demonstrate that there would be an environmental benefit or the development of any green tech. So, Mr. Speaker, I would urge any Canadian who is watching, and I know there are many because of the, the absolute corruption that has been normalized under this Liberal government and that Prime Minister supported by those NDP. It is, is, is absolutely astounding that in the midst of a time where they talk big about the environment, they are giving dollars to projects connected with Liberal insiders that don't, that, that didn't even try to explain, didn't even try to defend what they were doing as being good for the environment, even though that was the creation of this pro, these programs. 
the, uh, the Auditor General made it clear that the blame for this scandal falls on that government and the industry minister who did not sufficiently, quote, did not sufficiently monitor, unquote, the contracts that were given to Liberal insiders. And now, Mr. Speaker, I hear often from members of that side of the House, and I do hear it from Canadians as well, say, well, what would you do differently? Well, Mr. Speaker, I will, I'm proud to stand as a part of a party that takes governing seriously, that would fight corruption and incompetence, especially the sort of incompetence that leads to this uh, uh, type of, of gross mismanagement scandal and to the tune of $390 million being misappropriated. So, Mr. Speaker, I told you that I wanted to talk about why the uh, uh, finding of a violation of privilege is such an important issue. And I believe that it's, it's, it's the sort of thing that, that many uh, outside of this place, in fact, I would suggest, uh, certainly from some of the questions that I've heard from uh, uh, members of other parties in this place, that they don't take seriously Parliament's constitutional role. So let me unpack that uh, a little bit for you, Mr. Speaker, and for the benefit of those watching and why I started uh, uh, suggesting that documents matter. Because it is less about whether or not there's physical documents that you can read from to, 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 to uh, that, that's not the whole point here. The point is that we have an institution that is parliament, that is in our Westminster system of governance, is the su supreme authority of our country. And we have, as parliamentarians, that which makes up a parliament. A parliament is defined by the fact that in the case of the current circumstance, although I believe there are two Liberal vacancies with by-elections forthcoming and the rate at which the Liberals are losing seats, it uh, will certainly be interesting to watch what those election results are. Uh, but, but a parliament is made up by MPs. And the, the, the MPs that make up that parliament have unfettered access to call for documents and for people to come. Now, we talk about that a lot in the context of committee, and uh, it's, it's, it is a key element of the constitutional role that this place plays in our country. And we cannot dismiss the importance because that is what is, 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 is the cornerstone of the democratic system that we have, the fact that it is this place, the only place in the country, I would add, Mr. Speaker, that is truly representative of our country. Every square inch of the nation of Canada is represented in this place and only in this place. So that's why Parliament is given such significant latitude to be able to do things like call for documents. So what did the government refuse to do? Well, they refused to be transparent and provide these documents. They gave a whole litany of excuses. In fact, I found it very interesting when the House Leader was uh, 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 speaking very negatively about the Speaker's ruling that uh, has led to this debate, she, she was, was uh, quite astonishingly, she, she uh, pivoted away from saying that she was disputing the ruling, but said that she was dismayed at the ruling. Well, Mr. Speaker, I would suggest that any member of this place who is dismayed at the constitutional authority of what Parliament is meant to be needs to go back and look at the history, the, 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 the construction in terms of the constitutional reality and the traditions that make up what this place is. Because it has to come down to the, the very idea that where does the buck stop? Well, it stops with Parliament. And now I want to highlight something in the context of what I've just described, Mr. Speaker, because we have seen under these Liberals a concerning trend of wanting to distance the executive function of government from Parliament. Now, I, I understand that it is inconvenient that the Liberals do not have unfettered power to do anything they want. That is an inconvenient thing that they are forced up against. Now, I have seen over the last uh, close to five years that I've had the honour of serving in this place and serving the people of Battle River Crowfoot, how they've been able to uh, sign deals with and backroom handshakes and the whole deal with other opposition parties in order to have a functional majority. But, Mr. Speaker, the Canadians sent a minority parliament to Ottawa in the last election. And this place has the ability to do things like demand documents and has the full constitutional right to do so. And it is outlined very, very clearly that that is, in fact, 
the case. And, and Mr. Speaker, when you have members of the government that are, are, are making excuses and figuring out ways around this place, it is deeply concerning and should cause every Canadian, regardless of what political party they're a part of, quite frankly. This is not a partisan issue. This is a Canadian issue. And the member from Winnipeg over there seems to be uh, a laughing when I say that the very foundation of our institutions is not a partisan issue. And I think therein lies, Mr. Speaker, the problem. You have uh, uh, the, the very foundation of our de democratic system taken so flippantly by members like that who would pursue their own personal political and, as we see outlined through the course of this STC, SDTC scandal that includes includes back in 2018 when former Minister Navdi Baines didn't like the fact that the board chair of, of SDTC was criticizing things the government was doing, so we're replaced at, at contrary advice to, to those within his own department, and we've seen a continuation of, of that sort of political manipulation since that have led to this scandal. A very, very clear timeline that has been laid out, Mr. Speaker. They do not take seriously Parliament's role. Now, I understand that they would rather an audience than an opposition. They would rather be able to simply have, have, have carte blanche to do whatever they want to pursue their own personal, political, financial, and other interests. But Mr. Speaker, that's not how this place works. MPs are sent here to represent their constituents. And I would speak now, if I could, Mr. Speaker, to the Liberal backbench especially, because they have an obligation to not simply prop up their Prime Minister, but they are sent here as members of Parliament. We are on the ballot as members of Parliament, and they will stand to be judged in the next election by Canadians as a member of Parliament, and they will have to answer, just like the NDP and the Bloc, for supporting this type of corruption. They will have to stand to answer for that. So I would encourage them to take seriously the role that this place is meant to play, because as we have seen a, 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 a distancing that the the, the way that the Liberals operate is they want to have unfettered control to do whatever they want, and they treat Parliament only as an inconvenience. And that, Mr. Speaker, is truly a national scandal that is, is, is eroding the trust that Canadians should be able to have in their institutions. So, Mr. Speaker, it, it has been said that, that especially in a democracy, in a, as, uh, as, a, as a proud Canadian, as somebody that has... has has grown up in this country, as somebody who has, who has spent a lot of time looking at uh, being involved as a volunteer, as a staff member, as a, 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 a passionate political, I have watched how and, and studied a lot about government and the institutions, our, 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 uh, the parliament in the United Kingdom, the history of, those, of, of our democratic system how uh, our uh, like systems around the world developed over the course of the last number of centuries and some of the history that goes much further back than that. And Mr. Speaker, what is, is, is so, so very troubling is that it, it, it used to be that you may not like or agree with the person in charge of the country. You may not like the current Liberal Prime Minister. You may not have liked a previous Conservative Prime Minister. You may not have liked a previous Liberal Prime Minister. But you could respect the office and the institutions. Increasingly, Mr. Speaker, I hear from Canadians that are losing trust in the very institutions that we have. And it is actions like this and how those Liberals are so uh, bent on trying to keep uh, the truth from coming out in, in the case of refusing to provide these documents, well, now it's, it's the authority of the House and the violation of privilege that has led to the motion that we are debating today and the, the amendment, which I will be proud to support. It comes down to that very, very simple choice. Now, uh, uh, part of the challenge is, is that that erosion of trust and the normalization of scandal has led so many Canadians to question the legitimacy of much to do with government. And that, Mr. Speaker, is going to take hard work, and I'm so proud to be a part of a party that is, is committed to doing the hard work required to restore trust in our institutions.
to ensure that we can uh, 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 ma make sure that, that, that this place parliament is respected. And Mr. Speaker, I would suggest that at the very root of where we are today, this motion related to SDTC and these documents, these documents matter because it is the heart of our parliamentary institutions, our democracy that is at stake, and we have seen a continue, continual attempts by those Liberals to try and erode that. So, Mr. Speaker, we have uh, a, a litany. This, this, this adds to a litany of scandals that, and it's quite a. Astounding. I talked about the normalization of scandals, and I did, in, uh, as soon as the, the, the ruling was delivered yesterday evening, I went through and uh, uh, had, uh, and I reflected on some of the scandals, and as a, uh, I, I have been a member of the Ethics Committee for a significant portion of, of both this and the last Parliament, and uh, uh, we're, of course, debating the uh, document production related to SDTC. Prior to this, we, uh, 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 there was a RIVE scam and, and $60 plus million dollars on an app that was budgeted to cost less than 100000 Sole source contracts that we are seeing a, a, a massive, uh, both the, the mismanagement of those contracts today, but how we see that uh, it seems to be going to friends and insiders, and the fact that during a time of crisis, that, that government would, instead of working in the best interests of Canadians, would choose to enrich their friends. Absolutely shameful. The We Charity scandal, Mr. Speaker, how, again, in the midst of, of, of what was a national crisis, the, uh, the, the government chose their friends over top of uh, well-established protocols that could have easily been expanded. I think about the Canada Summer Jobs Program. Instead of using a program like that and expanding it, they were going to give a billion dollars to their friends. Uh, friends that had uh, uh, led, uh, given significant benefit and paid to the tunes of hundreds of thousands of dollars to close members of the Prime Minister's family. And I would uh, remind you, Mr. Speaker, that uh, the, the Prime Minister, because I was on the Ethics Committee at the time, the Prime Minister went as far as to prorogue Parliament to keep the names and the amounts of those payments from coming out. Further, we have the SNC-Lavalin scandal, where the only reason that the RCMP didn't lay charges against the sitting Prime Minister is because they determined it wasn't in the public interest of Canada. Can you imagine, Mr. Speaker? There has been such a deterioration of, of, of our institutions that has led to the, the, the public interest being deemed that the Prime Minister shouldn't have been dragged in front of a judge on trial. Uh, the Aga Khan Island, you have, have, have indigenous contracts, which I know is being studied at committee, how, how there, there seem to be liberal insiders that are manipulating that process, taking money that should be going to First Nations here in this country. We have the massive growth of consultants, Mr. Speaker. In fact, there's been some, some very uh, uh, interesting editorials of late to say that it's become a consulting capital, that the only way that you get anything done is that if you hire the right consultants, Mr. Speaker, well, that's not how a government should be ran. You have billions of dollars in handouts, including, you know, I can't help but think of the ventilators that went to a former Liberal MP and ended up in a scrapyard, uh, and to the tune of, again, hundreds of millions of dollars. So, Mr. Speaker, where does this leave us? Well, once again, uh, MPs will be given a choice to support accountability, and I would go further support the very foundation of what our democratic system is supposed to be, the idea of parliamentary supremacy. And, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that we can get the answers, not that Conservatives want, but that Canadians deserve. That's where the rubber hits the road. So I would urge all members, Liberal backbench, members of the NDP, members of the Bloc Québécois, and the few independents we have. Every MP in this place needs to think seriously about the role of Parliament, the principles of parliamentary supremacy, and ensure that we all do our part to combat the corruption and do the hard work required to restore trust in the institutions that Canadians need to be able to trust need to be able to look at with respect. So I would urge, urge every member in this place 
to support this motion, to take seriously our democracy and ensure that that hard work can be done. And Mr. Speaker, let me simply conclude with this, because I have my doubts, because after nine years we've seen exactly what this, these Liberals' attitudes is. That when it comes to the hard work of restoring trust, I'm proud to be a part of a party that has a plan, that has, ha, has the energy and will put in the effort to restore that trust. When the leader of the official opposition, the member from Carleton, is Prime Minister, we can do that hard work to restore the trust that's required in our institutions and work on behalf of Canadians, not on behalf of insiders. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.